day. And I am happy once again to be with you. I haven't uploaded a video in a while. I'm on a new system now. My son has uh, left a Mac system here that has the capacity to upload and uh, create high definition videos. So it's my privilege to be sitting in front of you. I love you. I thank God for you. I want to talk to you today about the validity of your words and your understanding of who you are. So let's um, take a short break and then we're going to get back into that and talk about it, okay? Okay, here we are back with you. Once again, this is Rose Brown bringing you the Word of God and trusting that it will bless you and you can find something to latch your faith onto in these sessions we have together. Okay, men say that you are as good as your word. In other words, if you say something and you carry it out, then you're a good man. If you say something and you don't carry it out, then men can't depend on you. Well, how many times have we all found ourselves on either end, one or, one or the other end, of that uh, particular situation? We've either said something and we've carried it out, or we've made a promise that we reneged on and didn't carry it out. Whatever the case may be, I want to convey to you the importance of what you say and how what you say brings validity to your circumstances. Now, <clears throat> things that we experience in time and space can be manipulated, can be interpreted, and in many ways can be avoided by our words. Manipulated means you actually have the power to adjust, to regulate, and to even prevent yourself from experiencing certain things. You definitely have the power once you have experienced a certain thing you can determine what that thing is by your interpretation of that thing. You understand what I'm saying? But then you also have the power to avoid certain things altogether, completely. And we're going to get into this and we're going to take biblical principles things that were said by the Apostle Paul in this case, in this teaching. And we are going to see how our words bring validity into our circumstances, our existence. You see, we are used to our experiences validating us. Are you understanding what I'm saying? What most of us are familiar with is experience being the teacher, experience being the all-consuming uh, sum total of our lives. Experience is not our best teacher. The Holy Ghost is our best teacher. I know, I know. It seems like I'm playing with words and, you know, but stay with me. Experience is something that exists in time and space and you are an individual that exists in God beyond time. Experience is the atmosphere that you develop in, and as you come into maturity, create in. 
by your words. Experience is just your canvas. Experience is your playground. Experience is what you have the power to instruct and to teach. In other words, instead of the experience teaching you, you teach the experience. You tell the experience who you are. You don't let the experience tell you who you are. See, our problem is we are so external in our, our uh, quest for substance and validity. We are always reaching outside of ourselves. That's why we, we always want, I know one of the things that I've struggled with personally, you always want people, you know, around you. You always want, I mean, Facebook, you know, is a, <laughs> I, I'm not knocking Facebook, but it's a, for, for those of us who are people addicts, Facebook is just a place where, you know, you can look up and you're on the computer all night, you know, and you don't know these people. You don't even know if, if they're real. You know, I won't get into some of the scams that come across, you know, that's, you know, for another atmosphere. But you can find yourself preoccupied with trying to validate yourself or validate something about you that is in the external. It is in the external. It is outside of you. And if it is outside of you, then it was meant to be manipulated and controlled by you. It, not it controlling you. You're supposed to control what is on the outside of you. You see, it is this concept that Christ introduced when he came into a world that did not receive him. It was made by him but it did not receive him. Then his people did not receive him. And then he was put to death in this world, in the atmosphere, in the closed knit environment with his people. And then he had to do something beyond that experience that showed the principalities, the powers, and the inhabitants on the earth who had faith to see it, it showed them that he was Lord over all. Are you staying with me now? Now that same Christ is in you. And our problem is we are so external. We are so motivated by things outside of us that have no power over us. And we let those things silence our words. We let those things speak to us and convey who we are and tell us who we are and box us into whatever that experience, circumstance, or check this out, person says about you. And walking like that is a surefire way. This whole concept of Christ consciousness and Christ in us, the hope of glory, and Christianity, period. You'll never have a real handle on it. Because you cannot serve an internal God while you are beholding to external things. That's why religion in itself, apart from an ingrown relationship with the Christ within, it's of no value. It's of no value. Now, it appears to be valuable, but it has a form of godliness that denies the very power. Now, how do I tie this into your words? Your words will always express the deepest thing that you believe. Even when you're hypocriting and you're saying something different other than what you feel, you're still expressing the deepest thing that you believe. You want to know how I say that? 
Because there is something on the inside of you that you believe that is making you feel that you can't tell the truth. Therefore, you're speaking in hypocrisy. So we're actually speaking the deepest thing we believe even when we're saying something that we don't really feel. Even when we know we feel something different, but we're saying something else to throw the person off or we don't want to say really what is on our mind because it might be too harsh or it might reveal something about us. We're still expressing what we believe to our core because we believe something about us that is making us fearful. We're believing somehow we don't have the right to say what we're saying for whatever reason. And so that core belief makes us lie. It makes us hypocrite. It makes us speak with feigned words. Now, it's very important that we understand this, my loved ones, truly important, because what we think will shape what we say. Some people, well, you know, I speak my mind. You know, uh, I'm always going to speak my mind. It doesn't matter. Well, I'll say to you, even deeper than you speaking your mind, there is something that you believe to the core that has you unable to determine when you should and should not speak your mind. Because there are some times, at least I've learned this, where you shouldn't say what's on your mind. <laughs> How many times have you, you didn't put your foot in your mouth, you put your whole body in your mouth. And, you know, come on, can we talk about it? I mean, hey, y'all, let's, <laughs> let's just get real. Um, I am the king. If, I, if there were a crown for a person that um, has said and done the wrong thing, I am I would rule. I bet you I would. I would rule because I have found ways. You guys, <laughs> I know some of you may look at me and you may see the confidence that I speak with and um, you may see how uh, bold and how intense and some people feel how legalistic I sound when I talk, how arrogant I sound, how proud when I sound when I talk. Let me tell you why I talk so strong. Let me tell you why I am so convinced. Let me tell you why I will go to the corner. I will go to the White House. I will go to the middle of the Iraqi desert and speak what I believe. Let me tell you why. Because I need it. Because I believe in it so much. And I need it so much that I cannot allow myself to live in wherever I have failed. I learned a long time ago that you have to go to the toilet. I learned a long time ago, I know how ludicrous and you know how uh, uncouth this may sound, that you soil yourself sometimes. And I learned a long time ago that the best thing you can do when you fall is to get up. Don't be worried about what kind of influence you've lost, who doesn't uh, believe in you. It, 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 some of you, if you're like me, let me tell you my history. I am a former entertainer. That was my professional career. I did that better than I did anything except draw. Um, I am a person who was always clingy and clutchy and uh, born under the moon sign, they say, of cancer, the crab. And uh, very sentimental, very loyal, very mushy. And um, it, it, when people uh, did not respond to me, when people do not want to be around me, well, my flesh is that kind of thing makes me feel uncomfortable. That's one of the things that the Lord has allowed me to have as a task. Okay? Well, there are a lot of you here like that. You, you, you're extremely gifted. I, it, listen, there's probably not anything under the sun that I can't do. You know, really. But there's this other side of me 
that can bungle anything. I mean, I, I, I felt at relationships. Uh, I felt at keeping my cool. This is me, you know. I, I mean, I've, 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 I've bungled things so much. What makes you think I'm not going to talk boldly about this? What makes you think that I am not going to be a maniac when it comes to forgiveness, power, and authority? I will look the devil in the eye in the middle of my biggest boo-boo and say, I am a son of the living God. I am the voice of God. And I am not what you managed to tempt me into. I am who I was created to be. Some of you need to get like that. You need to get like that today. 